Hello everybody and thank you for tuning in. My name is Zach Heater and in this video I want to talk about free will versus the divine plan. So it's been an interesting journey for me these past five, six years since I first really started waking up and learning more about these kind of spiritual concepts and things like that. And not even just spiritual concepts, even physiological uh, physics in general, science in general, <clears throat> because they all very much interrelate. So yeah, in regards to free will versus the divine plan, the divine plan can also be called our soul blueprint, and of course so many different names for it. Starting with free will, I just want to talk about my understanding of it through my own kind of studies that I've done over the past number of years and this planet we're on earth it's a very particular setup here we have 100 percent total free will now that's not the same for a lot of star systems or planets across the universe it's only a select few that will have that a very select few there's certain variable attributes that come with each different planet and system type that essentially dictate how things will be run. For example, the people on certain planets may not be able to experience certain things or to do certain things using their own will. They, they have this kind of overcloaking of spirit or their higher self that will guide them and be embodied with them fully. Whereas on this planet, we're much more of course, our higher self is always with us, is always within us. But we're much more, in a way, left to our own devices because the, the higher self is never going to step in and be like, no, you can't do that. We always have a choice. We always have a choice as to what action we wish to take. And so, yes, on this planet, we have 100% free will. But what's interesting as well what makes it a really interesting soup and experiment the, uh, the Earth human experiment is the fact that our particular human genome is unique and we are known often as the emotional ones. We are, some have said, the most emotional beings in this universe. In, in general, humans are, I believe, but our particular genome, our particular Earth human has total 100% access to the full spectrum range of emotions. And that in itself, again, just like having 100% free will, is it's very, it's rare, very rare. I don't, I, as far as I'm aware, there's I'm sure there is other beings and collectives and groups out there that do have access to the full range of emotions, but in our particular circumstances, the attributes that govern our star system and this planet in particular, yeah, we have total free will, total range of emotions, and those two things combined make for a very interesting and very experience-rich setup. <laughs> So, yeah, and then, of course, how... So, my question for the past five years has been, okay, so, for me, I always believed, going into my studies and learning about this stuff, I went through phases. Uh, I... <laughs> but in time, I kind of developed this idea that everything is pre-planned, like, everything in my life, even down to the minute detail, there's a plan and everything's okay and just surrender and trust and everything will be fine. And, but that's not the case. Like it's not really that black and white because at the same time, yeah, we can, well, yeah, we can believe in destiny. We can believe in fate and in a lot of ways, certain things are, but then we always have the free will to choose. Now I'm going to just kind of illustrate this and try and well, to explain this better. 
So one concept that I really like that I came across at one point was that about 40% of our lives our are essentially almost predetermined by our higher selves. And the remaining 60% is essentially the style of which we play out that predeterminism. And on that note, another way of visualizing that and understanding that is we, our higher self before incarnating and even during incarnation, when it needs to adjust things when it's going along, uh, before incarnating, our higher self will put forth before us milestones in our life for us to essentially reach and these milestones we because of free will we essentially always have this kind of <laughs> these milestones yeah great the higher self like has put these here for a reason because it knows what's going to be best for our own individual growth and expansion and to get us to where we want to go and particularly in this lifetime for those who are on the ascension path who are raising their frequency doing their inner work and who are going to be ascending in this life or well yeah in this life it's all of that said we can go to say for example the first pillar say a really important milestone in your life was going and meeting a certain person at university but you met that person and for whatever reason you felt that you there was something that blocked you from being able to meet that person and have that interaction that you needed to so essentially that uh that experience just pretty much just toppled down so you just kind of you know it's just that that mouse that milestone didn't work out how you'd hoped anyway and then so you've always got the free will to choose is what i'm saying you always have the free will as to whether or not you want to align yourself but the higher self of course it's all based on the feeling inside it's all that feeling you have inside your heart will sing your gut will sing if something is in alignment with you particularly your heart And then, of course, you have those overwhelming bad kind of more negative emotions, shall I say, not bad, but more negative, as we would call them for the sake of convenience. Those negative emotions can also guide us and say, for example, there's a trap here, there's a pitfall, and you have that, you can use your free will to either go into the pitfall or you can be like or you can use your internal guidance system which is your your higher self and listen to it and it can warn you in advance if you're tapped into it if you're tuned into it and you can then go around it and get to your milestone so there's yeah this is really what i wanted to share was i've up until recently, I lived a life believing that I could make certain choices and I would still get what I wanted or I would still experience what I'm supposed to experience with and I would have expectations of who and what and when and why and where those experiences would be and what and what they could be. And the reason why I'm sharing this video now is because some of those choices I've made that weren't coming from a place of alignment to my heart, they were coming from a place of pain, have literally pretty much destroyed a pretty big milestone in my life. 
through my free will actions and choices. And this can be something that's very hard for someone who knows that they create their reality to deal with. It's been a real challenge for me because now I've got to face the fact that I've pretty much ruined something that my higher self put before me for a reason. It would have been really good for me. But this, again, to overcome that is where the compassion comes in. I need to forgive myself. I need to realize, look, you made that choice for a reason at the time because you were hurting. And so you need to let yourself off the hook. You need to forgive yourself for that because it's not going to serve you to hold on to it anymore. And maybe even if there is a chance of rectifying the damage that was done to that pillar, then the only way you're going to be able to do that is through that work of forgiveness and addressing these red flags that caused you to create that problem with that pillar in your life. And so, yes, your higher self does have a plan for you, but at the same time, you have 100% total free will as to whether or not you're going to align to that plan or not. I personally find that idea both ridiculously scary and also incredibly empowering because all of a sudden gone are those days of me feeling like oh everything's going to work out fine and everything's just okay because everything will happen as it's meant to but really it's you who creates the meaning it's you who creates all of it from both the lower aspect of yourself as the incarnate, as well as the higher aspect of yourself as the higher self or, the, or your higher consciousness. It's like a blend between the two. You've got the higher self up here, sat on the, on the top of the mountain peak. There's your higher self, like, yay. And then you've got, and then you've got you down here in the valley. I'm using Brad Johnson's analogy because uh, it's a brilliant analogy. Well, actually, no, it's a Dronus's analogy. And your higher self can see the whole valley, understands and, and can even see the pathway up the side to the higher self. And you being down in the valley, you're covered with all these trees everywhere and all these trees are in your way and all these bushes and it's just a pain. And you're like, oh, I can't see the path to get to the higher self, to climb that rope, to climb that ladder up the mountain that will get me to my highest potential in this lifetime. And so the way that the higher self provides information and clues to the lower self is through feeling again, as I mentioned, and that's really the ticket. That's the ticket to take there. And then it's just a case of us as the lower self getting out of our own way and getting out of all of our pain and all of our baggage, all of our childhood trauma, all of our past life trauma, all amalgamated and getting all of that negativity out of us so that we can get closer to the vibration of our higher self. So there's always this kind of like, you've got your lower self's vibration and you've got your higher self's vibration and it's just trying to meet and find a middle ground between the two. And that's how we meet that kind of level between these two, the 40% predetermined and the 60% style. We're gonna meet in the middle and create that kind of, that co-creation between ourselves and our higher selves. So yeah, very interesting. I'm not gonna carry this video on much longer now. I just want to say thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been of value. It's been of value to me to go over it. And if there's one thing that I hope 
at least one person will find value from this in the way of will be that they'll find some empowerment from this knowing that fate and destiny are what you make of it be careful in how you act at those important moments in your life and you may not see them as important in the moment but just be careful with your free will because you're very powerful and you can create situations that are, will fill you with joy and you also have the power to destroy situations that could fill you with joy to your power thank you for watching lots of love goodbye zach everyone out